Good evening, spooky friends. My name is Cam. Tonight we're going to be talking about the Devil's Tree and serial killer Gerard Schaefer. Schaefer murdered women across South Florida and Ocala, and it is believed that his reach actually extended even farther than that. Now, before we get started, if you like scary stories, true crime, or just general spookiness, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will be posting every weekend. Tonight we're going to be talking about Gerard Schaefer's life, what led up to him becoming a serial killer, the kills themselves at the Devil's Tree and other areas, and my own personal experience at the Devil's Tree. Gerard Schaefer was a Midwestern Catholic schoolboy born in Wisconsin in 1946. His family relocated to Atlanta when he was a child and later moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where he began high school. Even as a child and teenager, Gerard spent his private time focusing on sexual perversions that no one yet knew about. At 12 years old, Gerard started obsessing over women's underwear, and he fantasized about voyeurism and violence. He became sexually excited by pain and bondage, including his own, and started to act out his fantasies about hurting women. Like most rapists do, he turned into a peeping Tom as a teenager. Schaefer's childhood neighbor, Lee Bonadies, went missing in 1968. Her skeletal remains were not discovered for a decade. Gerard was suspected of her murder as he had maintained a relationship by playing tennis with her and later admitted to watching her through open curtains. Police eventually found a piece of her jewelry among his possessions. In 1966, Gerard went on tour with the then-popular inspirational group Up With People. When Gerard returned to the Fort Lauderdale area, he moved in with his mother looking for a job. He decided to become a high school teacher because he wanted to instruct teenagers about good moral values, which is ironic. He was asked to leave the student teaching program twice, and after being hired at Plantation High School, his supervisor, Richard Goodhart, told Schaefer he'd better never let me hear of him trying to get a job with any authority over other people, or I'd do anything I could to prevent it. Despite considerable personality issues and being quoted as without an ounce of common sense, according to a former boss, Gerard became a cop even after he failed one psychological test. He used that power over others as he had in the past, but things got so much worse. Over the next two years, Schaefer would pick people up in his patrol car, including female hitchhikers. Some were never seen again. October 2nd, 1966, Nancy Leichner and Pamela Nader, ages 20 and 21, were with their boyfriends in Alexander Springs Park in the Ocala National Forest. While the boys dove and played in the lake, the girls went into the woods. Their bodies were found molested and choked a couple of hours later after their boyfriends called police and a search ensued. Many believed they were Gerard's first victims and he had gotten away with it. He wasn't even a suspect, and some sources say this case is still considered unsolved. Gerard couldn't get hired as a police officer in Fort Lauderdale, so he broadened his search, finally finding work in a town called Wilton Manors at 25 years old. Within months, he began calling women after he found their phone number and other personal information in the department database. He was hired in March 1972 and fired in April, but despite having been rejected from Broward County and let go in Wilton Manors, he was able to procure another job by June, this time in Stewart, for the Martin County Sheriff's Office by forging a recommendation letter from his former boss. He was patrolling near the beach when he picked up Pamela Wells and Nancy Trotter, both aged 17, and informed them that it was illegal to hitchhike, which was not true. He drove them back to where they were staying, offering to pick them up the next day and give them a ride to the beach, quote, for their protection, end quote. Instead, he drove them to a secluded area of Hutchinson Island. Schaefer tied both girls up, placing nooses around their necks and making sure the bindings were secure and both girls were up off the ground on tree roots. He threatened to sell them into prostitution or make them watch each other die. Suddenly, his police radio paged him to a call and he told them he would be back. They escaped, flagging down a car on a nearby highway and called 911 to report him. This photo you see of Nancy Trotter reenacting how Gerard had them bound and gagged is one of the most famous photos from the case. He tried to say he was just trying to scare the girls to teach them a lesson about the dangers of hitchhiking and said that it was foolish, but Sheriff Richard Crowder saw through the lie and fired him, leveling charges against the former deputy for one count of false imprisonment and two counts of aggravated assault. Schaefer was convicted and sentenced to one year behind bars with three years probation. He went to jail in January of 1973, but sadly it was too late for many of his victims. When he was out on bond in August 1972, up until he began serving the sentence, he had plenty of time to continue acting out his perverted fantasies by raping and torturing women. Evidence would later surface that he had probably been killing since his time with Up With People, and he had a preference for teen girls and hitchhikers. 
Susan Place and Georgia Jessup were best friends and high school juniors who loved going to the beach. When Susan Place's parents saw her leave, her mother, Lucille, wrote down the license plate of the car they got into. She knew Susan was with a man, but did not know his name. The girls only said that they were going to the beach. Lucille remembered the car, an aquamarine sedan, that pulled up to the house on the night she last saw her daughter. Despite having a name, a license plate tag, and description of the vehicle, the police did not connect Schaefer to Place and Jessup's disappearance until March of 1973. And still, this was only after Lucille found a letter in her daughter's bedroom from Schaefer, used the address on it to locate his house, and led police to him. Schaefer said he didn't know the two girls, but in April, their decomposed bodies were found on Hutchinson Island. Evidence indicated they had been tied to a tree, just like Trotter and Wells had been. Police recognized this work as Schaefer's and immediately knew it was him from his previous crimes. Both had been hacked to death and raped, their bodies mutilated and buried in a single shallow grave. Susan Place had been shot with a bullet through the jaw. After Lucille led the authorities to her daughter's killer in 1973, police searched Gerard's home that he shared with Mommy Dearest and found a pile of incriminating and disturbing items. These included a stash of jewelry and personal belongings that were eventually tied to 38 missing or murdered teenagers. There was also the teeth of 22-year-old Carmen Marie Halleck, documents belonging to Colette Marie Goodenough and Barbara Ann Wilcox, two teen girls from Iowa, whose skullless skeletal remains were discovered in 1977 in Martin County, and a journal that Schaefer kept detailing his killings. There was a treasure trove of his writings that detailed sexual torture, dismemberment, and murder. Authorities believed the stories were the true events of his crimes. With the letter Lucille Place had found in Susan's bedroom and a purse belonging to Georgia Jessup recovered from Schaefer's then-wife Teresa, police knew they had the necessary evidence to go to trial. None of Gerard's other murders would ever be officially solved, but families finally received some closure, one by one, as police linked missing people and skeletal remains to their loved ones' personal belongings. They finally knew that a serial killer was responsible for the disappearances of these girls and women. Schaefer has also been suspected for unsolved murders in West Virginia, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. One detective said the former cop had the coldest eyes I have ever seen. A former detective said after Schaefer's death, I believe his accounts are accurate depictions of what he did to his victims. His writings are the crimes that he carried out. The names of all Gerard Schaefer's victims might sadly never be known. A girl named Nancy Poole was just linked to him this year after being a Jane Doe for 48 years. Most authorities, including the FBI, believe the body count is beyond 30. Schaefer may be responsible for the rape, torture, and murder of 80 to 110 women and girls. He described himself as killing for eight years, and at least three murder victims tied to him were not from the Fort Lauderdale area. He also claimed he killed women on three continents when he spent time in Europe and Africa after his failed stint as a teacher. Gerard also sometimes took his victims to Port St. Lucie, to what is today Okamak Park, to rape, torture, and kill them. He would butcher their bodies and hang them from the tree, then sometimes bury the body beneath it. In most cases, it is believed Gerard had intercourse with the bodies after death. Law enforcement do agree that Gerard killed nine girls and women from August 1969 to October 1972, but many victims are still out there. That's it for tonight, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, if you like scary stories, true crime, or anything spooky, please remember to subscribe to this channel. I will be posting a video every weekend from now on. If you have any requests, you can comment them below and maybe I will get to them. Also, please remember to subscribe to my TikTok if you do not already and my Instagram where I have a tiny itty bitty following and I would like to grow it. Stay safe out there, guys. I love you and I will see you next week.